So people like this. People like this servant leadership. Two questions. One question was, was our Lord really servant leader? Second question is, can we do it with our ability, our willpower, our resolve? Can we do it? So those are the two questions I'm posing for you. Let's take a look at our Lord. The, the stuff that I learned from Bible, our Lord is not always just kind God, right? Always just loving God. He is the uh, creator. He has this righteousness. He cannot be in the same place. He cannot withstand the sin. He is the righteous God. He is fearful God. He is the fearful God because of this nature. At the same time, he is compassionate God. He has compassion for us. I am who I am. You, you all know this. That's how God described himself. I am who I am. Doesn't need any more explanation. Doesn't need any editorial. He's just himself. Nobody created him. Nobody helped him become God. <laughs> he's, he's God. He's just perfect, self-contented. He's just him. So I think this is very powerful because translating to our lives how many times, how many hours uh, in a day we try to please other people. We try to get recognition from others. We try to get compliments from others. You're a good person. You're doing well. Your work is great. You're such a good Christian. How many times are we seeking that assurance? It's because we are not creators. Exodus chapter 19, verse 24 and 21, it's such a blessing for me. God came to my life uh, in 2003. I was church goer for 15 years before that, but I was really church goer, <laughs> not a believer. And I was deacon, I was elder, because you paid your dues, to your church, you, you serve the church diligently, faithfully, then church gives you deaconship and eldership as the like badge of something. So I was, I was getting all that. I didn't know God. I didn't meet God until 2003. So he came to me. I, I was longing and seeking for him, of course, but he came to me with such a blessing. And soon after he illuminated, he illuminated his righteousness and compassionate characters through this chapter 19. Uh, I read these verses many, many times before. It's such a well-known verses, but I didn't get that enlightenment until God came into my life and, and showed me who he is. So it, it's a startling discovery that I had. This is the first time when Moses said, I did all the fence building. I told everybody, don't, don't come near the mountain, so it's all safe. Don't worry about it, God. And this is what he said. Go down, warn the people, so they do not force their way through to see the Lord, and many of them perish. So what, what the perish means to you? God is not doing anything. He's just being there, and you try to get up there, and you perish. <laughs> you just destroy yourself. You just die yourself, you kill yourself, that's perish. He's not doing anything. 
it's, it's because he is the light and we are in the darkness. If I flip the switch here, turn the lights off, and if it's completely dark outside, it will be completely dark here, right? I think we are in that state, certainly back then. And you flip the light switch, and instantaneously, all the darkness goes away. It's perished. The light didn't do anything. It just shined. Soon after he came to my life, he, he showed me this verse. And it's such a blessing to me personally because this is what our God is and who he is. He's not just grandfather sitting in the back room and just waiting for you to come and, and tell, tell God, hey, I need this. <laughs> Get me, get me an iPhone next week. I, I really need this iPhone. So, would you? And he says, oh, okay. Smile, all smile, and said, okay. I'm loving God, kind God, so sure, I'll grant your wish. You will get iPhone. Next time, again, open the door. He's still sitting there quietly waiting for you. He said, I need, I need this this time, so give me in two days. Surely, go in peace. And we'll do that. He has that love for us, but he's almighty creator. He's almighty righteous creator who has this characteristic. So I think this is, at least to me, shaping my uh, uh, leadership, if I have any leadership. This was such a tremendous blessing teaching for me that you have to understand this to do this. So you need, you need both. You cannot be just compassionate leader. If you just become compassionate leader, you become very weak, you become very ineffective, you become wishy-wash, whatever works. Like the grandfather sitting in the back room, people come and ask you with all smile, okay, please, go ahead and do that. You look great, you're right, do that, I'll, I'll make it happen. That's not the leadership. <laughs> that's not the leadership at all. That's, that's a management by cowardness. And that is not our God. Our God is not that coward. <laughs> and he's not that inefficient, ineffective, and everything goes kind of God. He has righteousness that brings out fairness, open and honest, sincerity, and high integrity. So it, it's a very, very tough balance. Going back to the question that I asked you, was our Jesus Christ, our Lord, servant leader or not? What, what do you think? There may not be one answer. That's okay. I, I think, uh, at least from my perspective and my lifelong experience, he is not a servant leader. At least the way the secular people try to define the servant leadership. He is not the grandfather sitting in the back room and doing all the kumbaya and everything's right and you, you're all great. He is not that kind of God. <laughs> So he's not a servant leader. He also has this in perfect balance, in perfect balance, in harmony. He has both righteousness, compassion together. We will never have that perfect balance. We will never have that harmony in our ability. But he, because he's the almighty creator, he can have that.